to another booktube video from me, Lauren from Lauren and the Books. I've got a Spice Girls t-shirt on. I've got a Spice Girls t-shirt on. I've got a Spice Girls t-shirt on. Today I'm going to be doing, I've got so many bloody pillows on this chair as well, I'm wedged in. Um, today I'm going to be, are you guys too far away? Today I'm going to be doing my January wrap up. Now I read eight books in the month of January, which I'm really, really pleased with. It means I'm on time with my um, 100 books in the year of 2018. It's slightly less than what I'd been reading previously. I'd been reading like anything up to 15 books, so it's almost half that. But I've read some really good books this month and I just feel like affording myself the extra time to do that means that I've had a much better reading experience this month than I have done well, in a really long time, and that sort of reflected in how many five star books I've had. So I will start with, I will do the two audiobooks that I've listened to first, because one of them was a one star and literally like the worst bloody book ever, and the other one was a five star, literally like the best book ever. So I'll start with the one star one, um, which was The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. Um, and what drew me to this is that Andrew Scott was narrating the story. Now, Andrew Scott is um, one of my favourite actors who played uh, Moriarty in the Sherlock series he's also been in James Bond films um, he's an Irish actor and I just honestly I think he's one of the best actors I've ever seen ever he's just incredible he's also a really good voice actor I've listened to a um, audible original series um, in which he is in and I just like he's just amazing like I really really love him so that's what drew me to that however the story was just crap. It was like a revisiting, obviously, it's a crime novel, they always are. So, like, you followed um, his character, Ed, when he was a child, voiced by Asa Butterfield, which was quite, a, a, again, quite a good narration. And then Ed's character in um, the, uh, now 2016, um, which was voiced by Andrew Scott. However, Andrew Scott is Northern Irish, and the voice of um, Ed as a child was English. So he had an English child voice and a Northern Irish adult voice which completely threw me off before anything had even started and the storyline was just Tuh. It was basically like there'd been um, a murder when um, uh, when Ed was younger and um, it's called the chalk men because um, the clues that led to this murder um, and was, were little chalk men drew on um, well on uh, like driveways and things like that and in the park that they did. I just thought it was really like I really didn't enjoy it at all and the only thing that kept me going in it was because Andrew Scott's um, voice acting was pretty good but even that by the end I was just like I just want this over with and it got to the point where I had like an hour left and I was like am I going to give up on this or shall I just carry on and I've powered through and that's why I never really have many one star ratings in my reading because I don't often finish one stars um, but I did finish this one I just I don't feel like there was enough payoff it was a really like they one of the main characters even said oh isn't there an awful lot of loose ends in this case left over and like a lot of people not really sure what's going on and I was like yes that's exactly like so for one of the characters within the story to say that just shows how sort of crap this sort of ha like jo disjointed story was so yeah really didn't enjoy it I do really enjoy Andrew Scott however and yeah it's just a shame really so yeah that was the first one that I um well that's one that I've finished recently but the first audiobook I listened to this year um, and I started listening to it at the end of last year was one of my favorite books of a really really long time and I just feel like it's gonna really be hard to beat this book so far this year so um I've already talked about this in my um January favourites but it is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman um this the audiobook of this was wonderful the woman who um narrated it um I've forgotten her bloody name I'll insert it down below because I can't, it's Kathleen something Kathleen McMahon I want to say I think that's it um she does an amazing job so you um you follow Eleanor in her um very solitary life um when I went into this book I wasn't I didn't really know what to expect at all and it opens with this sort of bikini wax scene of Eleanor going to get a bikini wax and it's all quite sort of like like, oh, oh lol she's obviously never been for a bikini wax before um, and then you quite quickly realize that Eleanor's living a very solitary and lonely life um, and there's just such heart-wrenching parts in there where she talks about having spend a whole weekend where she doesn't even open her mouth to talk to anybody else and um, just she becomes sort of um, obsessed with and not not in a like super creepy way just in a 
she wants companionship way with a um, a local musician um she forms a friendship with one of the guys at work through um not through her like not through her wanting to be friends with this guy they they both witness a man have a um have a heart attack and they assist him and then they become friends off the back of that and their friendship is just wonderful throughout it's just an amazing amazing story of friendship and loneliness and how little things things that mean such like not not things that mean small things to me but things i wouldn't even think about and how they can be such big things in people's lives and just wonderful and eleanor herself is just somebody that's going to stay with me for such a long long time i really would urge everyone to watch this uh, to read this i haven't heard anything anyone say anything bad about it yet even people who um like I haven't seen anything less than a, a three star review. This for me is a five star review. I absolutely adored it. I'm urging everyone to read it. My sister's listening to the audiobook at the moment. I bought it for my mum for Christmas and I just want everyone to read it. It is wonderful. One of my favourite, favourite books of a long time. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I feel like I'm gonna, I, I'm just gonna, it's just gonna stay with me for a really long time. Really, really adorbs so the actual books that i've got onto and as i said i've had quite a few five stars this month which has been wonderful um i would i will go through them in the order of which i read them the first book i read this year was how to go vegan um this is um, pro um this is produced i guess so they don't really have they don't actually have an author's name with it but it's produced by um Veganuary, oh sorry, Kate Schuler is the author. Um, it's produced by Veganuary, which is a scheme that runs um, worldwide where um, people can choose to go vegan for the month of January, which is something that I did this year. And um, it is now the third of February, and I've still been I've still been eating vegan, so it's going pretty well. Um, this for me, this was a this was a five star read because I feel like um, my reasons for going vegan and for going vegetarian last year were not primarily animal based. They were almost like it was seen like when I went vegetarian well i went pescatarian first it was just a sort of like almost like i don't really eat that much meat anyway why not just jack it in completely and when you stop eating meat you can't help but become um aware of some things that are going on in the meat industry and off the back of that i feel like you can't really help but become aware of some of the awful stuff awful stuff that's going on in the dairy and egg industry would eggs come under dairy the dairy and egg industry those industries um and i've seen things now, not off the back of this book, like I've seen things that I cannot unsee. But this book was really concise, really well presented. It gave all the facts in a way that wasn't like, oh, this is so awful, this is what you should be doing. This is like, these are the facts, take from them what you will. It also had really interesting bits about environment, um, environmental um, benefits of going um, vegan, health benefits, sustainability benefits, and a really good section in here also about um, what you can like um athletes who um who are vegan and and what they've done to get like really like i found that really interesting that whole bit because a lot of the things like oh if you're a vegan you don't get protein and there's like a, for instance the ireland rugby league international anti malali anthony malali he is vegan and yeah i just found this very very interesting and yeah it answered a lot of the questions that i feel like people would ask for a vegan and i feel like this is something i'm going to dip back into so gave that five stars really really accessible very very interesting and easy to read the next one i read was little fires everywhere by celeste ing now david's mum bought me this for christmas i really love this i'd never read anything by celeste ing before um, and she was on my sort of radar of um somebody that i wanted to read and i I really really enjoyed this it was sort of like a um a thriller but not like a literary thriller i would probably describe it as um it is a it's set in a place called shaker heights which is a suburb of cleveland um and it follows a um a family um of the richardsons i think the Richardsons, yeah, the Richardsons family, um, who are, they've sort of living from the outside what you would believe to be the perfect life. They've got obviously got a lovely house and um, they're a, a, a family of five and everything seems to be going wonderful. And then uh, a woman um, who is an artist and a single mother starts being their cleaner um, and she's got a younger daughter um, who befriends um, the Richardson's children and um, it opens with this this massive fire that's happened at the Richardson's house and um, they say that it was completely um, it was it was started um, on purpose and it was there were little fires everywhere in all the rooms um, and then you sort of go back and find out what has led you up to this point where there is a massive fire at the Richardson's house and I just found it so um, unputdownable honestly like really really unputdownable and 
I felt like the characters were really built really well and I just really loved it. I'm really looking forward to reading um, Celeste Singh's other books which is called Everything I Never Told You. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this and I gave it five stars and yeah, I just thought it was brilliant. And this book feels lovely too, so that was very good. Um, the next book I read, well, I gave four stars. Um, no, I think I gave it three stars actually. That was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arndon. Um, again, this was one that I very, very much enjoyed. I read it, I read this a lot in the bath. You can see where the pages have gone a bit funny. Um, I read this for my uh, my online book club that I run on Facebook with some friends. Um, it is a sort of folklore tale um, from um, set in northern Russia um, and follows um, a family. And I don't really want to say much more than that because there's like loads of twisty turny bits and things like that that I don't really want to reveal to you. And, like there's sort of characters in here which I was really pleasant like pleasantly surprised when I come across them and things like that so it just unfolds wonderfully and I really really like this however I do feel like it was like 50 to 100 pages too long um and it's not like a, it's 400 and just over 450 pages long and I do feel like it was probably about 50 to 100 pages too long just a little bit it lost me a little bit towards the end but I really love the main character Vasya who you follow um I really love the Russian names I really really like seeing them down and saying them a lot of them are shortened as well so like Vasya who's the main character um her long name is Vasil Vasilisa or v Vasilisa um I mean, I might be completely fucking murdering these names, but yeah, it was really, really nice and enjoyable. I have the second in the series, um, which I will go to at some point, but I feel like this is perfect winter reading. So um, potentially now we're looking like spring is on its way. So it might be that I hang on to The Girl in the Tower, which is the second one until um, winter is back here. But yeah, very much enjoyed this. The next one was also another five star book and it is The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night by my wonderful friend, Jane Campbell. This is an amazing short story collection. I really loved it. And I feel like I talked about this quite a lot when I was doing a currently reading um, in January. So what I found about this book, uh, this series, is that I'd I'd heard Jen talk about these. I'd been to the Lush Book Club um, at, in the middle of December, and she was talking about some of the stories. And at that point, I hadn't read it because I knew I wanted to treat myself to it in January. Um, and when she was talking about the stories, I was sort of like pinpointing, oh, I really like that, and oh, I really like that, and. Honestly, I just loved everything in it. My favourite story was Jacob, um, which is a story about a, um, a young lad, Jacob, who is concerned about his sister and her behaviour. And he writes to the weather lady who's on the TV because she always seems to know everything. And I just found that sentiment so beautiful that I was absolutely wrapped up in Jacob. And also, <laughs> there, was a, um, there was a Christmas advert a few years ago, um, and the little boy on there was called Jacob, and I couldn't help but see this little boy on the Marks and Spencer's Christmas <laughs> advert from a few years ago. Um, he had a really, really cute voice, and I was just imagining, imagining him, but I really, really loved this. It's like, some of it was so, like, original, and I hadn't read short stories like it. For instance, the, um, the story which is called The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night, is set out all like let me see if I can find it um almost like a play um which made for really really fast reading but yeah there was just so many like really great short, like short stories long stories that an another story I really loved was the um the coffin story I can't think what's that's called about a coffin hotel Aunt Libby's coffin hotel where people go to stay in coffins for the night um to be closer to the dead and yeah it's just so many amazing ideas like wonderful I loved it I loved it really really loved it uh, the next one I read was also another little short one um, just to do with veganism. My sister bought me this for my birthday last year, um, The Little Book of Veganism. I feel like I gave this two or three stars and I feel like I probably maybe should have come to this sooner rather than I'd read How to Go Vegan by Veganuary and found that completely helpful. And this was just like a little like pick up book. It's got some recipes in there and things like that. Um, yeah, it's just it was just great to be able to read something just to sort of re remind myself um, why I was doing becoming a vegan. Uh, and then the last book I read was uh, another four star book. I really, really love this. This was The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gower. This is the proof copy and it's absolutely beautiful. Look, it's all just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Um, and I really, really love this. I did this as a sort of like casual buddy read with um, Mercedes and Simon because we're all at different points. Like I think Mercedes and I started and we stormed ahead and Simon hadn't really read anything and then Simon ended up finishing it before the rest of us and things like that. But yeah, this followed some amazing, amazing characters. So um, the main per the two of the main characters, it follows a Mr. Hancock, um, who is the husband of Mrs. Hancock, and a, um, a woman called Angelica. Now, Angelica seems to, um, f like, she is a, um, I use the word prostitute, but for me, it feels like it's more like a, um, what's the word where someone, David, 
What's the word when someone's not a prostitute but they sort of are, are, are hired to, to be with people? An escort. Escort, yes. <laughs> <Don't, Bye>. es <laughs> um, an escort. Um, and um, she um, gets involved with Mr. Hancock um, at an event uh, where she's told to look after him, where Mr. Hancock has, um, he's been, he's got a mermaid or like what potentially could be a mermaid um on display and she is told to um to look after him and then um their lives take completely different turn-ins and um she he is still very much hung up on angelica um she's got no interest in him at all and um yeah and then their lives meet back together at the end but i really love this it was really like um it reminded me a lot to start with of uh, Tipping the Velvet, but it was quite jaunty and it really rolled along nicely and um, I found it humorous and dark and um, happy and sad and yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. It really, um, it really made me pleased and I feel like this would make an amazing, amazing television series. Um, so yeah, very much enjoyed it. So those are the books that I read in the month of January. Really, really pleased with the books I read in the month of January. It was lovely. How is everyone else's reading going in 2018? Still can't believe it's 2018, imagine. Um, I hope you're all doing well and I will see you all again soon for another booktube video.